Well, hello there. You're about to see photos not in any other albums, and mixed in are website pictures of the best of Southern England, a tour I took in September of 2011. In this first photo, it shows on a red line the fastest way to get from, the, uh, from America overseas to England. <laughs> this is the lobby of the uh, London Metropole Hilton, where I stayed. And after you check in uh, on the mezzanine, there's an indoor swimming pool that I used on my day off. I'll tell you more about later. And uh, in this lobby shot behind the plant is the Globus Journeys office. This is the first room that I had with a beautiful, uh, huge picture window. And that's what the bathroom looked like when I first checked in anyway. And now with the camera pointed out the window from the floor I was on, you pick up a lot of reflections. But down below on the street level was the store I got my water bottles in. Food City, like the Indian people say, Food City. And here's some other shots out the window of the uh, neighboring buildings. It's, there's no fish eye lens on this. This is the architecture of London. Some of the buildings are uh, curved in that fashion. On the street level, right across the street from the hotel, was a store I could buy a cell phone in, and I did. I didn't use it much, but it did come in handy. And then this is the street that I walked up and down a couple of times. When I got tired of the high prices of food in the hotel, I found a KFC and <laughs> had myself a chicken dinner. This is uh, quite the melting pot of all different cultures from around the world. A lot of India and, of course, France. But uh, you can see the streets are uh, kind of uh, on the old side, almost like New York City 42nd Street. This is the uh, Fiamma restaurant where I eat my first breakfast on Monday and again on the following Sunday morning. There's one of the breakfasts I had. It looks yellow, but the eggs are actually white for some reason. And the mezzanine floor, again, a, a different view of the pool. Of, now, remember, these are all pictures that I found online after I got home. This is the itinerary. You might want to pause this so you could look and see where the tour went. And this is St. Paul's Cathedral. Again, Googled after I got home. And here's another view of St. Paul's Cathedral right there. And this next shot is the uh, Duke of Ellington, where he uh, is laid to rest inside St. Paul's Cathedral. And this is King Arthur's resting place. Weren't supposed to take pictures, but I did get away with these two. And then I put the camera away. The London Wheel, of course. And this archway coming up was visible from my hotel window way off in the distance so I went to the front desk and asked what it was and I found out I believe it's Wimbledon Stadium famous for its uh, tennis matches and here's the same stadium at night that archway looks real nice at night now this was a room in uh, some city in England the tour went to seven different cities and I tried to upgrade from there because we had problems with the windows locking and if we looked right out the window, it was on a rooftop. So I didn't like that, but I ended up staying because I was too tired from touring. I didn't want to pack again and unpack, so I just stayed. This is the room in Bath, England. Uh, you know, some in, in the other room, they fixed the window. In Bath, they didn't. When I got back after dinner, it wasn't fixed, so I just stayed there. That's one of the bathrooms, towel rack and... The circular, beautiful circular stall showers where I threw all my wet towels right there. Now, we went to the Towers of London on the first day. And on the way there, you pass by the London Bridge. These are nice night shots, moonlit night, sh night shots. I have some pictures at my Facebook albums of this with me in them, uh, in the picture. But we didn't actually go on the London Bridge. This is just next to the Towers of London. Right there, that's Anne Hathaway's cottage 
where William Shakespeare lived and died in Stratford-upon-Avon, and here's the same town with a William Shakespeare birthday celebration. And this is in um, Oxford, the student uh, university town, Oxford University. This is Market Street, kind of a semi-indoor-outdoor mall there. And if you step outside, you see these kind of things in the street. And uh, on the same side of the street where I was were some shops like you see here, some ice cream shops and what have you. And also a music store called, um, what was it called? Oh, The Glass House. I actually went in there and gave the guy one of my business cards for the podcast. Here's a close-up of the window. You can see some Beatle uh, paraphernalia in there. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band on display, as you can see better right here. And then there's Arundel. I keep saying Arundel. It might be Arundel. The city of Arundel, and that's Arundel Castle. I walked all the way around, took plenty of pictures of ducks. Now, on Thursday night, we had an optional dinner in a little town called, a little village called Castlecombe. This is the city, or the village, I should say, that was used as a backdrop in the 1960s Rex Harrington movie, Dr. Doolittle. Very quaint, very nice. It's a very old town, uh, dating from the 12th century, and the homes are just beautiful. We had dinner in a 800-year-old pub. That's it right there. And uh, it was very interesting. The whole uh, inside interior was, was very interesting with different rooms and stuff. That's another view. Some beautiful waterways and things. And right smack in the middle of the town is this hut. And inside that hut is a statue and a plaque with the date 1200 something or other. And I, I have that actual plaque close up in my Facebook albums under Castlecombe. And uh, my favorite stop on the tour was Friday morning, about 9.45 a.m., Stonehenge. When I got home, I found out that they had dug up a little bit of the field there and found some uh, ancient remains, since Stonehenge was uh, also used as a burial ground, in addition to an astronomical instrument. These are video freeze frames when I got home, and different uh, aerial uh, positions showing stones at Stonehenge that I personally uh, freeze framed a lot better shots that I could get but I do have something on my YouTube channel in this building this ceiling you're not allowed to take pictures so I got this on Google it's where the Magna Carta is displayed in Salisbury same city as Stonehenge inside the Salisbury church well not actually in the church but in a building near the church these are views of um, Leeds Castle where King George, I believe, the fourth, I'm not too sure of the number, but it is King George lived. That's how the sunset affects the uh, castle walls. And that's inside Leeds Castle, yours truly in the library. And then we have this one uh, showing the uh, lush lifestyle that King George had. He loved to entertain, he loved to uh, have social guests, and when they had dinner, this is how they did it. Leeds Castle. We actually walk through the dining area, the kitchen, and they actually have some chickens hanging there over the uh, where they would roast them. <laughs> These are uh, Leeds Castle sliver pictures, as I like to call them. And then in the city of Bath, you have the Roman baths, where the Roman soldiers went and cleansed and purified themselves. That's a little uh, corner shot with an interesting uh, green reflection effect. And from the terrace, you could look down over the uh, pool. Now, people, the general public was not allowed to swim in these pools. You're not allowed to go in that water. You can just walk around the perimeter. But this is a visitor's pool, so if you're staying in Bath, you can come and visit and, and uh, get a swim in and also get some dining. And uh, we didn't go in there, we didn't have time, but we did see all of the Roman baths. Fantastic exhibit. Under that red sign there is the entranceway to the Winston Churchill British War Rooms Museum. And this is the dining room, a little cafe they had inside. I took pictures in there 
So you'll, you can see them in my uh, Facebook album. Then I walked home from the museum through Hyde Park. There I am. A passerby took that picture, and on the street going back to Victoria Station to catch a bus, I saw this sign and figured I could put some of my own stuff in it when I got home, like you see there. I wish that text was actually up there <laughs> in London. Now this is the uh, the station for the Eurostar in London. It goes beneath the English Channel from London to Paris at 186 miles per hour, right through that tunnel there. And uh, two hours later, you're in Paris. And if with any luck at all, you have breakfast, which I didn't get. I was I had the wrong information. And uh, there is the uh, station that we got out in Paris and then we uh, went down to get on the tour bus and the tour bus went first to the Eiffel Tower now these you know you gotta look at these the pictures I took in Paris on my Facebook albums because these are just Google pictures of night pictures I was there in the daytime but these are beautiful nighttime views that's the Seine River and you'll see in a minute a glass top uh, barge kind of boat that they call the cruise and that's the waterway that they call a river. <laughs> Looks more like a canal, if you ask me. There's a night view of the Seine River. And uh, I was on that boat with thousands of people. Then we went to the museum, the Lourdes Museum, where they house the Mona Lisa. Something else I didn't get to see. Hit me up and I'll explain about what happened. Facebook uploading of 1,600 pictures when I got home. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.